This is Business Class on Your Money. Hi, I'm James Wilkinson and welcome to Business Class. On today's show, we're checking into some of our favorite hotels in Asia this year. Before we do that, here's this week's travel news. Overlo Group has launched its latest Australian hotel called Overlo the Valley in Brisbane. The hotel was officially launched at a star-studded event on Wednesday night at the former Emporium Hotel in Fortitude Valley. The hotel features 103 rooms and it serves up a frenzy of rich colour, commissioned art pieces, vivid wallpaper and playful furniture. There are five different room categories on offer at Overlo the Valley, including our favourite The Rockstar Suites, which feature a king-size bed and a separate lounge, bar and dining area that features a dining table, armchairs, a speaker unit and original art pieces. The hotel also features a rooftop swimming pool, a gym, sauna and meeting space, while early in 2019, the hotel will open up a bar and restaurant with acclaimed chef Justin North. Overlo is also known for its bevy of free treats. As a brand standard, guests who book directly with Overlo will receive complimentary minibar, Wi-Fi, self-laundry, breakfast, a social happy hour, and a loot bag full of treats. Sofitel has partnered with Hainan Airlines to launch a new premium collection of its Sofitel MyBed products across the carrier's business class cabins. The Hainan Airlines partnership will take its high dream concept onboard sleep experience to greater heights, with Sofitel's signature bedding that includes a waist cushion, full-size pillows, duvet, bed sheet, feather topper and blanket. Made with patented technology of the highest thread count, the duvet cover, pillowcase and bed sheet collection features the airline's latest dream feather design. Still on airlines and Qantas has expanded its code share agreement with Jetstar, providing more travel options for customers traveling between Australia and Thailand. Qantas will add its code to Jetstar's Sydney Phuket, Melbourne Phuket and Melbourne Bangkok services, which are operated by Jetstar's Boeing 787 Dreamliner aircraft. Customers traveling between Australia and Thailand will now be able to book the Jetstar direct operated service between Sydney, Melbourne and Thailand in one direction, with a Qantas operated service on the return leg. When traveling on a Qantas code share service operated by Jetstar's 787 aircraft between Melbourne, Sydney and Thailand, Qantas customers will enjoy a number of benefits, including earning frequent flyer points, receiving a free meal, seatback entertainment and a comfort pack, plus the Qantas baggage allowance for the entire journey. One of the best ways to get across Asia is on Cathay Pacific. Here's what you can expect on board their A350 fleet in business class. Cathay Pacific's business class has been one of our favorite cabins in the sky since it was launched over six years ago. But the latest version, which was launched on the Airbus A350-900 a couple of years ago, and just last month on the A350-1000, has taken the experience to a whole new level. What you'll immediately notice when you board the A350 is the spacious cabin, thanks to the extra wide fuselage of the next generation aircraft. The interior features more space and comfort, including panoramic windows, LED mood lighting, and huge overhead lockers. The A350 offers greater cabin humidity, which will make you feel less jet-lagged after the flight. And thanks to the spacious, comfortable seats in business class, you'll feel well-rested as well. When it comes to the seats, they're an upgrade of the impressive Zodiac Cirrus seats found on Cathay's Airbus A330 and Boeing 777 aircraft. You'll find the seats in a one-to-one -one configuration with all aisle access. And the first thing you'll notice is the amount of space available, from the side storage, which can fit a handbag, laptop or magazines, to the side cabinet for headphones, valuables and iPads. There's an oversized tray that's ideal for working or dining. And once a meal turns up, you'll find room to place your computer or iPad onto the side and still have access to the full tray table. The A350 variation of the seat has some extra storage compartments and when the seat is fully reclined, you'll find a 190 centimeter long, fully flat bed. When it comes to sleeping, you can expect fluffy pillows and a soft fabric duvet, along with amenity kits stocked with Jurlig products. On the entertainment front, you'll find an 18.5 inch HD entertainment screen, 
which features hundreds of movies, television programs, music tracks, and live satellite TV on the Studio CX Entertainment System. Cathay Pacific's Airbus A350s are also kitted out with Wi-Fi, and when we tested it recently, both the upload and download speed was excellent, and it's also great value too, with most flights ranging between $9.95 and $19.95 per sector. When it comes to food and beverage, Cathay Pacific certainly impresses with a number of Asian and Western meal options available, including an excellent breakfast service on overnight flights. On the drinks front, expect top wines from Australia, New Zealand, Europe and the Americas, alongside top shelf spirits, coffee, tea, juice and soft drinks. The service on board from the cabin crew is exceptional on every flight and coupled with the seats, entertainment and food, it adds up to one of the best business class cabin offerings in the sky. Now, while the in-flight offering is excellent, Cathay Pacific saves some of the greatest experiences for Hong Kong Airport in the form of several lounges that are up there with the best in the world. From the wing to the pier, the deck and the bridge, no matter where your flight is departing from, you'll have access to top-notch food and drinks and a relaxing setting before your flight departs. If we had to make a call of our favorite, it would be the Pier First Class Lounge, which has a brilliant restaurant, Asia's best airport cocktail bar, a day spa, business center, and spacious shower suites to freshen up in. Overall, you can expect a five-star experience, and Cathay Pacific only continues to get better with every new product the airline debuts. To book your flight, visit CathayPacific.com. Coming up after the break on business class, we check into some of our favorite hotels in Asia. We'll be back with more business class on Your Money. And be sure to check out yourmoney.com.au. And now, more business class on Your Money. Hotel Tuv in Hong Kong is one of the best new boutique hotels in Asia. Let's go inside. Um, the favourite thing about the hotel is I think there's a really big contrast uh, around the neighbourhood and it's such a big contrast from where, from the moment that you walk into the hotel and how it's so different around the neighbourhood. Um, it's a modern contrast uh, against like the old cities and this is the authentic area where we're in. Um, it's, uh, you can see all the historical buildings that was built 200 years ago. Um, and where we are right now, keeping the old authentic uh, buildings, at the same time, we're showing something that is very, very, uh, we have a very interesting concept uh, in the hotel industry. And that is really what's one of my favorite uh, elements that it's uh, contributing to the hotel industry. It's very design driven. Um, the founder themselves, they are both uh, design related. They graduated from Parsons and, and they're very qualified of uh, being one of the mogul for driving the art scenery in the hotel industry. Uh, seven years ago, we decided we wanted to really challenge um, the art industry and hotel industry in Hong Kong and hence we wanted to push forward this whole minimalist concept which is very rare in Hong Kong and here we use very very simple materials and we have five base melt elements of concrete, steel, brass, wood and this is how we define luxury. Uh, as we all know, Hong Kong is a very, very expensive city with very small rooms. And in order for our customers to enjoy the most of it, we wanted to create a very spacious bathroom so that they will be getting excited about when they're taking a shower. Usually tourists go to places like Central and Causeway Bay and we decided this is somewhere where we want the tourists to explore and this is like the local side and we want them to really explore more uh, not just in like the main city but the subsidiaries that's very interesting to explore as well. Artisan launched onto the scene in Asia this year with several hotels that are at the forefront of design and innovation. Let's find out more. Well, thank you so much for your time today. We're here at the Artisan Hotel in, outside Nanjing in China. 
And this is one of the most talked about new hotel brands in the world, but it yes. didn't happen overnight, did it? No, uh, it, it took us some time. Uh, I think we formed the company uh, five, and a half, five years ago. Um, we're looking at the market, there are certain gap that we feel that we can sort of uh, uh, plug in. Uh, the, well, when we were in the business, we know that uh, a lot of hotels, they look the same, they are the same actually. Uh, you can see hotel uh, taking down their brand, putting another brand on, there's another brand being operated in the marketplace. So I, I think also the market shifting quite a bit in terms of the uh, customer trend. Uh, people looking for different experiences. Uh, so we, we see that there's a, a, a good gap that we can sort of uh, fulfill. Uh, we look at art, culture and heritage. Uh, it's something we really want to do. Uh, we want to go a little bit more in depth about art, culture and heritage rather than just only a, a decoration place that would put up art alone. But we want to create a platform, we want to create uh, a community that we can uh, benefit uh, not only uh, the customer experiences, also the local community uh, to bring back the heritage or the art or the culture scene uh, into sharing with uh, different people. So it took us some time, but I think we have, uh, we're lucky uh, to have a, a owner who share the same value, same concept with us. Uh, this hotel has been on making for the last uh, two over years and at last we opened the door. And if you look at the style of hotel that this is, this is very design driven. Uh, all the villas on the land here are all very, from different yes, architects indeed. around the world. So the, this is a very design spec brand, and unlike anything you've done before, isn't it? No, I think this is something very unique. Uh, uh, it fit into to our idea about art culture and things, but it also the owner also looking at that, they get really the world famous architects around the world uh, and putting up 20 really beautiful uh, really wild type of uh, architecture piece uh, and, and really amazing and then they also have a, a art museum uh, they have a, a art gallery down there and you can all the artists come around the art students come around architecture students come around uh, or the people who admire architecture and art and do come here to visit so I think it's a very unique uh, type of a product and uh, we are in the city really not far from the city it's only 35 minute drive from, uh, from downtown and you have beautiful surrounding, you are up in the mountain and uh, you have a backdrop of the lake, you have a time to tour around you appreciate uh, such a nature, uh, such a green uh, but you have a very great setting with art, culture, architecturally uh, it's beautiful and the art pieces are beautiful here well, This is a pretty spectacular property, you've also got a, a great property in Shanghai that's uh, coming yeah. online very soon Yes, I think that is a study a different product. Uh, this is really uh, again into a uh, 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 very unique art culture in terms of uh, architecture. Uh, the one in Shanghai, uh, we're opening uh, in the next month actually, uh, September 15. It's called Artisan Habitat. It's more a community uh, uh, scene. It's a totally different product. Uh, we're no longer building a lobby. We're building a town square. Uh, people come there, you have a TED talk, you have put a pop-up store. Uh, you can sit around to do your uh, sort of integration with people, dining, eating. So it, it is a, 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 a different type of hotel we're building uh, for the new generation in terms of heart, not age. Uh, people, new generation doesn't mean that they're, they're young or they're old. I think it's more the mindset. Uh, so we, we, we cater for a change of need in terms of customer traveling and how they do business, how they want to enjoy, how they want to share it. Where we are now, there's obviously an art museum, there are auditoriums, and uh, it's very, obviously, architecture, design, and uh, very, very, a very art-driven hotel, which is amazing, right across the board. Yes, indeed, indeed. I think this is uh, the main so-called DNA of our brands, the artisan brand, and also the artisan habitat brand. It's really related to the art, culture, and heritage, uh, integrated to the local community and also giving a platform to the new generation for the young artists to have a showcase spaces. Uh, so we'll do different programs to make sure that uh, it's an ongoing uh, sort of uh, year on year around the integration of the community and giving, I think, customer, uh, travelers, a different experience. So you go to one artisan, it's not the same artisan the other because they're different art, different culture, different background, different heritage, but the DNA is the same of the brand. 
And if you look at you've all, uh, where, where, the, where the brand's going soon, you've obviously got Singapore coming along. Whereabouts can we see the artisan hotels in the future? Oh, we're looking at major gateway city. Uh, we are selected as much as people selecting us. I think you need to find the right partner, right location. Uh, and I think while well, we're looking at all the major gateway city, we open Beijing, we now open Shanghai. We are looking at uh, Singapore. Uh, we would like to have it in Hong Kong. We would like to in Australia. We want to nest it near and, and Melbourne. And we're also looking at other major uh, China gateway city, uh, such as Chongqing, Qingdu. Uh, those are the really uh, a city that you will have a lot of traffic, a lot of experiences, because local culture is very, very rich in those cities. Actually, across China, uh, culture and art is very rich. I mean, 5,000 years history in Chinese culture. So it's a lot of opportunity for us to explore that, sharing with the travelers, sharing with the, uh, the local uh, communities. And we're in a country here which is one of the fastest growing traveling publics yes. anywhere in the world. Well, I think domestic travel, uh, I think that's why I remember uh, in this year it's 5 billion trips. Uh, year on year is close to 13, I think it's 12.8. 13% growth. I don't see any other part of the world with that much of uh, domestic traffic. And also international traffic is a big number. It's 136 million over. Uh, you talk about growth rate is around 70% uh, from last year. So hey, this is a great opportunity. I think mean, that number is still keep going. Uh, China is still uh, driving a, a high GDP growth. Uh, to, to the, a lot of people, China's 7% is low, but uh, to other countries, 7% it's a hell of a number to, uh, of a growth uh, for, for in the city. Uh, so we think that uh, there will be a lot of opportunity within China. And this is one of the reasons we're very focused in this part of the world to start off with. Uh, but the market has depth, definitely have depth. So we have opportunity here. And especially where we are now, this, this property here is a flagship for you. It's obviously, it's on a huge piece of land. So you yeah. can do things a bit different out here. Yes, indeed. Uh, I think this is an amazing setting you can do the lounge, you can do wedding party, a beautiful setting. You have the lake front, you have the mountain front, you have a fantastic sort of architecture features. So you can do really a lot of different type of uh, uh, events. Even you do a concert event here, you can do uh, totally different because the land we have do allow us to do so. And you are, you are not disturbing the, the public because we are really tucked away a little bit uh, uh, from the city. So the, the, the noise pollution is not an issue for you. And when you look at the Artisan brand, obviously you said Australia is on your radar, so are there any cities that you have to be in? I think there's not such thing called we have to be there. I think the customer carries us there and also the partner carries us there. For sure, I would love to be in the, in the gateway city to start off with. Uh, Melbourne, Sydney, uh, Brisbane, those are cities we would like to do. Uh, especially, I think Australia offers a lot of uh, different type of art, different type of culture. I think we will be really happy we can find uh, some people partner with us to do and explore the opportunity there. Now you look at this hotel, we talked about the design angle of it. It's, um, it's very on trend at the moment. It's very that mid-century. It's very uh, lots of brass everywhere, concrete. This is a, pretty much an example of how hotels are being done around the world when they're done well. Yes, I think there's a lot of thought given not only from us, uh, but also from our business partner uh, and the design and architecture together. I, I think the point is not that one idea. It's a combination of togetherness, of effort, uh, sharing uh, our concept, to make sure we deliver and execute. I think this hotel is one of the good examples of how execution uh, to deliver DNA we talk about. Coming up next on Business Class, we check into one of the top business hotels in Singapore. We'll be back with more Business Class on Your Money. And be sure to check out yourmoney.com.au. And now, more Business Class on Your Money. Conrad Centennial Singapore is ideal for both business and leisure travellers. Let's check in now. Thanks so much for your time today. We're here at the beautiful Conrad Centennial in Singapore, which has just had an amazing room makeover, hasn't it? Yes, uh, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, we just completed a major overhaul of all our rooms. We call it a re rejuvenation of all the rooms. Um, it took us only eight months to do. Uh, we had to really speed it up, and I think we did an amazing job. We received only good comments about it. 
Um, once in a while, somebody's asking for a writing desk, but I think that's passe nowadays. Um, everybody has a laptop, everybody's working from, from his room, and uh, um, it's only good comments which we have received so far. I think we have a great product now in Singapore to, uh, to advocate. And you have one of the most competitive areas for luxury hotels anywhere in Asia, I think, in the two block radius <coughs> of this hotel. What's your big X factor here? The big X factor is probably our team members. Um, we have one of the best locations in Singapore. Uh, this area of Singapore has become very, very prominent, very favorable to, to travelers. But I think in the end, a uh, hotel is a hotel is a hotel. But our team members make a lot of difference and we are, I'm personally very proud of our team members. Um, they go out of their way, they are trying to be themselves, they're trying to allow the guests to be themselves and, and I think they're doing a very, very good job, job with that. Definitely excellent service here and I've also noticed that in the club lounge in particular you have up here a spectacular club lounge where the service has been even even better than expected as well. Thank you, that's good to hear because we just opened it again after renovation as well and I must say our team members here are really really uh, not only trying to, to give a service but to make you feel at home. I always believe there are good hotels, there are great hotels, um, I think the best hotels uh, make the guests feel at home and our competition is not so much the other luxury hotels but it's your home where you're uh, expecting to get service similar at, at home. One of the things I love as a business traveler is having the executive lounge it offers a bit of calm relaxation great place to get some work done as well so how important is having that product here in the hotel? I, I think without that we wouldn't exist anymore the, the guest is looking for some good food and beverage services as well in the lounge, but I think it's more the tranquility, the peace, um, the friendliness of, of the team members and, and to work with them, yeah. And you've also got some great restaurants here in the hotel and bars, don't you? My favorite restaurant is uh, Golden Peony. It's um, been in a very, very good shape since a long, long time. Our chef has been there for a wonderful 10, 12, 15 years. Um, our restaurant manager, she has rejoined us and we have probably one of the best dim sum selections in Singapore. And you're well known for having a very good wine collection here in the hotel as well. Yes, we do. We have quite a list of wine. I'm not a wine expert. Uh, I actually don't drink at all, but we have our food and beverage director who is really an expert. And we have very often uh, mixtures and, and um, uh, evenings where we serve wine and matching the food and vice versa as well. It's, it's very good. Well, obviously, you know, it's a very competitive food city, Singapore, so having something on a high quality for the guests is very important. It's extremely important. It's not so much the quantity, but the quality, which is very, very important. Here in Singapore, you can get any food which you like at any price, really. Uh, you can get a good a meal for five dollars you can get a very good meal for five hundred dollars you, you have to find the niche and, and I think we found our niche especially with the Oscars as well where we serve uh, breakfast lunch and dinner buffets and we are going to open it for 24 hours uh, it's one of the few restaurants which will be open 24 hours in Singapore Amazing again for those who uh, are jet lagged at three o'clock in the morning after <coughs> coming in from London, you can have a good meal too. That is one of the reasons um, for the late arrivals, for the early departures. And our team members don't have to get up at four o'clock in the morning to come to work by six o'clock. So they can work overnight. Yeah? And you also have one of the best pool decks in Singapore, if we, if we can say so as well. We completely overhauled our fourth floor, which is uh, the pool, the gym, the spa. The spa is not quite completed yet, but it will be ready in, in about two weeks' time. The gym is spectacular. It's, it's uh, everything there, what anybody needs to have in order to really work out. We have a second lounge there, which we use in case we are really, really over full and, and overcrowded here in this lounge. So it, it's very um, well received already. We have many, many guests who don't want to come to the club lounge on the 31st floor, but who would like to be on the 4th floor because it's so airy. It's right next to the pool and it's very helpful there. Well, that's it from us on Business Class. Thanks for watching and see you next time from New York City.